we're going to be talking about what we keep in our geo bags or as our go-to supplies for geocaching. Hey everybody, it's Stash Cash and the Hedge Ham yet again. This video today here is kind of like our last little video there. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'll put a card up here in the corner. If you're watching on your PC, you can go check it out or you'll find the links somewhere on your mobile. Rude. Today, guys, we're going to be talking about what we keep in our geo bags or as our go to supplies for geocaching. As we are geo vloggers, we of course have a camera bag, which is just off of set here, specifically for our GoPros, our microphones, and other accessories that we use besides our phones for recording video and audio. Ta ta. This. It's one of our phones for recording video and you're taking it away from me. Be a star lord. So we have all sorts of different things that go into that bag specifically. We then have another backpack, which is our food supplies bag. And that'll typically have our sunscreens, bug sprays, snacks, and our three pound water bag. However, if you follow us on social media or if you've seen us on the tweet chat of the US geocaching hour, or even the UK geocaching hour when I happen to be a part of that on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the question of where your caching name comes up, and we've discussed how our caching name comes from the fact that many of the first few caches we found were in the condition of needs maintenance. And many of the cash owners no longer play the game. And at the time, we didn't really know about a lot of stuff. <laughs> we jumped headfirst into geocaching and gathered up containers of similar size to what we knew we would look, be looking for, camouflaged them on our way to caches, and replaced damaged containers that were beyond repair. So, therefore, we kept the caches flowing taking care of the needs maintenance for people who probably don't even play the game anymore. But kept some caches going in some pretty cool areas or even just in some lesser known spots. Before we go to, into this box right here, which I see I need to redo the labeling on as it's rubbed off for the most part. A few months back, we shared on Instagram these lovely little guys. It's just a simple wire hanger attached to a bison tube, which we hang off of our rear view mirror in our car is a decoration but they make for a great easy accessible cache for when you decide you want to place a cache or if you have to replace a bison tube i'm not going to get into a tangent here guys but never replace a container just because you can't find it do you want it you can have it now I don't want it. I know you love that one. Plays with that one in the car all the time. All right, so let's crack into this bad boy. This is our cash maintenance kit. This is the creme de la creme of cash maintenance kits. In this bad boy, you open it up. The first thing you're going to find is our official geocache stencil. It's uh, stuck to a piece of meat packing paper because it's still kind of sticky when we've used it on our own caches. This stencil works pretty great. It works better if you have stencil glue to adhere it to the surface you're going to use. But even with a Sharpie marker and just kind of going in it, uh, we've done it for a few caches that we've... Whoa. We've done it for a few caches where we've given them an official logo once we've cleaned them up. 
Under the rules, you are supposed to have some sort of labeling of some kind, even if it's just the logo, to identify that it is a geocache so you don't have issues with law enforcement. The next thing in here, guys, is a whole bunch of stuff. Now, technically, this has nothing to do with maintenance. This is actually our this is actually our stamp collecting book for when we are doing a letterbox hybrid or an actual letterbox cache. Don't remove stamps from letterbox caches. They're supposed to stay with the letterbox cache. There, that's my rant for this. That's my rant for this video. Although, that might not be the only one. All right, what else we got here? Ziploc bags. This is a large Ziploc bag filled with other large size Ziploc bags. Or if somebody has a notepad like this as a logbook, it will fit in one of these bags. Then we have a smaller Ziploc bag with even smaller Ziploc bags for the nano and micro logs. And also if we find smaller swag items like necklaces and stuff, we'll put them in there. Um, if you guys check out the other video and you see another idea that we have for them. We have a couple of large garbage bags. Keep those in hand because sometimes shopping bags just aren't enough for how much garbage you come across at a geocache location. Then we get, we have some cheap log books, just some dollar store ones, a few more coiled notebook ones. This is a random book we have. You know, it does in a pinch as a makeshift logbook. You can find one that's completely waterlogged or whatever the case may be. We have a small take with you first aid kit. This one was actually given out at a local event by the fire department. I just got a couple of bandages, a small pair of scissors, and we added in some non-latex gloves, which you should replace every three years, by the way as they do deteriorate over time, it could have small holes or fissures that you don't notice. This is an educational channel, you remember that. Receipt paper. Now this one, these are actually meant as logbooks. And we've seen a couple of caches that have used them. And I'm planning on doing my own cache with one of these in the future. But I haven't quite figured out mechanism I want. I haven't quite figured out the mechanism I want to use for that cache, but I will be using one of these at that time. Scissors! A large pair of scissors, which can come in handy for a variety of reasons, but specifically, you're not playing with the scissors. Specifically, it is for our duct tape. We have some camo duct tape and some regular duct tape. There's some more in here. Have it all in a baggie. Keep it from getting damaged. But we have a pair of scissors in there for trimming our duct tape to camouflage containers or repair containers. We use the, the silver duct tape for repairs usually. Then this bad boy is full of pencils. Whoa! We have some mini pencils, which you can get at Ikea or your local uh, lottery retailer. And then if your kids get a bunch of pencils with Valentine's Day gifts or other holidays from school, whatever, your kids are never going to use 700 pencils, especially in today's era. Stick them in here. Toss them in a geocache when they're lacking in a pen, but you could fit a writing utensil in them. Good to have extra of those. Along with our garbage bags, we have a bunch of rubberized gloves so that we can keep our hands clean if we have to get cleaning. And we usually do major CEDO as we go. This is my little baby, literally. This is the main cash maintenance kit, but this is our micro cash maintenance kit. If we're going on a longer hike to a cache, that may potentially need repairs, we take this bad boy. He's also got a little bit of swag in him. He fits better in our travel backpack. You're not getting it. Here, have this one. It also has a couple bits of swag in it. 
simply because this cash container fits better than our smaller cash container in our backpacks, just because of the profile here. Uh, the other one's about this deep, which is kind of awkward for a backpack, but it's all right if it's a cash where we can use the stroller and just chuck it in underneath. Let's crack into this guy. This little guy has all of our buttons. Buttons galore. I usually, when we're starting a cash adventure, I will grab a few of these and just rude. I'll grab a couple of these, each of the four different styles I have, toss them in my pocket. Even if we're not taking this kit with us, we're taking the other swag kit, just so we have some. What? Then inside here, we have some other small container caches. These ones all interlock. And while I might not find caches like this out into the wild on a regular basis, it's nice just to have an option for a smaller cache type. These guys are actually the tubes your crazy glue comes in, or your super glue. And they work great. They don't have a waterproof seal, but if they're in upright position, I haven't had any issues with water in a couple of mine. I like using these actually for stage ones that just have information to find stage two in. And you can see I'm using them to hold some more of the Ikea mini pencils. Take them with us. We have a self-retracting X-Acto knife. Basically, you can use this to sharpen pencils or you can use it for other things. We have some right in the rain bison logs. It is very common in our area for pill bottles to be used as geocaching containers. So I do have a couple of them here. This one fits in. This, this one fits inside of that one. And inside of this pill bottle, I have a bag of nano caches with logs as well as a collection of bison tubes of different colors, also all with logs. So if I come across a container that has been completely damaged, I can replace the container. Or if I happen across a spot that does not yet have a cache, I can put one out. A cache box of maintenance or swag of this size, typically you're not going to forget it, but I would recommend putting your contact information either on the inside of the box or on the outside like we do, so that if you do happen to set it beside your car and forget about it, drive away, someone has a way to get a hold of you. And you should do that on the inside of any of your containers, just like you would do for any cache that you hide. So there you have it guys, that is our cash maintenance kit. If you have any questions about cash maintenance or cash maintenance kits, or if you have suggestions even for other cashers, be sure to let me know down in the comments and share your experiences with cash maintenance so that other people can learn from what you've done yourself. Be sure to check out these videos over here guys. Have a great night, happy caching. Why are you throwing everything on the floor? This is the worst co-host ever. I'm sorry, but it's true. You're very distracting to the audience. I know! How are they ever going to see all the cool, awesome things I have if you're distracting them by throwing stuff all over the place like a madman?